All right, welcome everyone. This is the experimental show here at the Glass Academy. Time for experimentation. Glass Academy, Glass Academy, in case you're confused. Yes. So last week we made snakes. We have started putting an Instagram poll up, so if you follow us on one platform, maybe you follow us on another. And if you don't, well then you can't vote, so. So it's on Instagram. Every yeah. Wednesday is the, uh, the Poll, the poll, which would get your information on what you'd rather see being done or what product you like better or whatever's going to pertain to the experimental show, which we do on Sundays. Yes. And so this was last week and you notice we had a guest artist jump in, but this was spots was the winner. But what I realized afterwards is, and this was a stripe. This is our recycled glass. They are not finished products. We're experimenting. But what I realized was maybe we should just start with the, the shape first and then address color after. So this week's question was S, which it doesn't look like a great S, or coil for the snake. And a lot of people voted for S, and I do have to say, I think that's because the picture that was posted right behind the pole was an suggestive. S snake. Suggestive. Very suggestive. Because in my opinion, if you take one more good look at these, this is my favorite one by far. Not because I made it, just looking at the different yeah, pieces, the yeah, different, yeah. You know, I mean, the different shapes. Whatever. Like that is cool. You see the little tail on it looking all fresh. It sits completely flat. It's a coiled snake and there's a lot less room for it to break than Mr. Wild one over here. Yeah, but that wasn't finished. So we're gonna try some more right now. That's and then, what we're here so for, prototypage. We sell these items in our gallery, which is here in Dearborn, Michigan, but we also ship them. Sell and them so online. we sell them online and we wanna make sure that they're shippable, that they're not so fragile. Uh, we've been shipping over two years during the pandemic, our whole product line. And I think during that time we had two items. So two items in two years is not bad. What do you mean we had two items? Two items break. Oh. And in the end, it wasn't our fault. So I could say zero. We're perfect. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so Jake brought over this box of miscellaneous wooden tools and he's like, oh my gosh, I could make a jig out of wood because the glass can go on wood and not crack or break. So uh, let's take it back a second because that, so that was Chris's idea actually last week. And we're talking about, it was voted the S-Bend, and we're talking about how we get an S-Bend in the glass, and specifically something a little bit similar to each one, because now that we're selling online, you sell a green snake, and we have it listed as a picture of the green snake. We need to be able to make a snake that's 85% similar to that snake and ship it out. It's handmade, they're all a little bit different, and that's why people buy our glass, but it needs to be somewhat similar. So we can't just freehand each snake and make it, and maybe we can if we get the coil down or we get some certain well, style down, that's and, what we're testing out. Yeah, I mean, anyone who does anything like ceramic mugs over and over and over, you get good at you it. You get but, real good at it. But like Chris was saying and Michelle was just saying, we're thinking about putting together a jig, that's spelled J-I-G, that's a really fun word, and you could do one of those too right there. <laughs> but uh, if you look at this, that's the S bend right there. So we would cut this in theory, off. Theory, you cut this off. We put it on another piece of wood, and then when the, it's hot, you take the snake and you would wrap it around that and let it stiffen and pull it off, and you'd have your S bend. And I think you'd actually have to like do one, yeah, give it space. Yeah, they wouldn't a be more this space tall for sure. so that you could bend. I mean, we can't practice it now; they're too tall. So then you got to think about material too, because Michelle also was thinking mold wise. And if we use these molds and we did the same thing, maybe a triple bend, you use the mold on this inch thick piece of steel plate around all the metal molds. You put that on there and you take a little too long finishing up this and up here cracks because it's so cold on the mold. So we need to finesse in the difference between cold metal and wood that may work perfectly, but also will deteriorate from the glass burning it so we do maybe 50 snakes and then it burns right through the wood and you've got to make a new jig so we're gonna practice we can't use the wood because we didn't cut it down we're gonna try something with the metal and then the coil can also we can do the metal we can take a hot bit of glass and go around and coil then take that out and like finesse the last part finesse it 
Okay. Vanessa Hudgens. Do you want to go first? We need yes. a coin. We need a Glass Academy coin that we can flip. The mold. Nah, you go first. All right. Which one are you going to do? I'm going to, well, we got to do, I think we should focus on S for a while. Okay. And I think I'm going to try it without a mold first. Just freehand it and see how difficult that may be. We're going to use our recycle glass today so that we can continue to uh, just recycle it. This is just testing the shape. I think I got a little bit too much glass, but that's to be figured out. The other thing to be figured out is the head, and that's what we were working on in the last one. We like the shapes, we like the size of the snake, but to get the head to stay on there and look correct without too much tooling and, and too much texture from the tools on there is something to be finagled. Finagle. Oh, we gotta write these names down. We'll start doing them on the board. Yeah. Ovalize, finagle. Vanessa. Vanessa. So I'm going to pull it off the pipe a little bit to start while it's still real juicy. That's not too clean, but that's all right. It's the prototyper. Then I'm going to hold it up in the air, use gravity to let it fall back so the head gets bigger, and then, oof, that was rough. Start that tail. Now we don't want to have that pinch mark on there, so when I grab it with the diamond shears, I'm going to be pulling it up and I'll cut off whatever's left over. But there is one over there that you see the cut marks. I leave the cut marks on there and it kind of looks like the end of a snake with the rattle tailishness. There's tailishness. so many options. So many. It's definitely thicker than I would have liked. So the other thing is it's winter. The marver is cold. The metal is cold. We can preheat all that before we do it, which gives us more working time. So here's the S bend. Let it fall one way. Bring it back up and around. That is an S. but and there's still no head on it it's still too thick and then how do we make it the same s every time without having the perfect amount of glass and the perfect heat and right. the perfect hand so mode. then the choice is we can have in the description each one is different or after we do 25 it's just going to be a yeah exactly do you know how like a, a baker does cakes you could gather right on that you want me to do one yeah, you go ahead. A baker does cakes or you know how they like make pretzels or they use the cake bag and, and they get make the something. motion down. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, and glass blowing is a little more expensive than cake too. So you come in in the morning and if we didn't make snakes for maybe two weeks and then we have 10 snakes we've got to make and it takes two, maybe three snakes to remember that motion, that's 25, 30 minutes of figuring things out with the whole hot, with the assistant here with the material being used, that's a pretty big learning time in the morning. So possibly the idea of a jig is a good thing. So let's see how Michelle does it. She went for about the same amount of glass that I did. She's shaping it up a little bit, cooling it down before she heats it up. So she's going for the jacks. Putting that crease line in there just like I did. That's gonna be how that where the head is and where we knock it off. And ideally I'm thinking that the head's gonna be, we'll probably just knock the piece off and torch that head really round and smooth it out with a butter knife. Maybe give it a little texture. So we'll see. So that kind of looks like a tabletop spinner. You put a little ball on the top and uh, see how it goes. It got pretty cold there, so now she's gonna heat it up. She's gonna pinpoint that heat where she wants it. You see, she's only about halfway in there because she doesn't want that whole thing to pull off all the way off the pipe. Hope everybody's having a beautiful Sunday, relaxing Sunday out there right now. It's been a beautiful week weekend. Ah. It is Super Bowl Sunday. It is Super Bowl Sunday. And I was just speaking with Zach about how I'd like to uh, put some money on the Rams. 
So we're going to see how they do. They got Matt Stafford from uh, from the Detroit Lions, longtime Lions fan or Lions QB. So I went to put a neck into it, and that turns out nice. But if I had compressed air, I could do a little air on it. So I could get. She's just going to pour water all <laughs> over it. Well. Wow. I don't have compressed air, do I? So what did that do? Why did I do that? She cooled it down. She's running the risk of that thing just popping right off whenever uh, it happens. But isn't this a prototype? This is a prototype. She's trying things out. So if she this were a, a real one, I would have the um, compressed air. And I would just air that uh, to cool it so that I can really heat the bottom. Never fear, prototypes are here. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Yeah, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on these uh, on these prototypes. Nope, not doing it. I can't pull that mass. Yep. Just gets too thin. So I don't want to hear any words on this one. No words. Uh, uh. All, All right. right. But the head, that's still cool. That's kind of. I'm gonna try the S bend on this one. So the other part of this is that the products that we develop, it's not easy. They don't just all snap right out of our brain. We're gonna spend a good two, three days to figure this out. Yeah, that's that's the cost of blowing glass. Let's see. I, I like this move. I don't want to cool it down too much, but I do want to pull it off the pipe, and then I want to give it that cone shape, so the widest part is up near the pipe, so that, that's where the head is. I got less glass, I think it's gonna be more in control on this one. Give it that head. Oh no. Those tweezers are waxy, folks, which means I tried to pull out a little bit there and it didn't work. Mom, would you mind torching the tips of those tweezers? Why, were they sticky? They were waxy, yeah. Grab the other ones them. off the bench if you want. Oh, those would be good. She's torching them to melt away any wax and or other material that wouldn't, that would put any kind of vapor in between the tool and the glass sticking. Thank you, Mom. So here we go. I'm going to go for it right here. Pull that out. I'm going to pull this guy out nice and long. I'd tell you to spin the pipe around, but I'm nervous. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, can you pull that way? That's what we're going for. It's getting close. You want to just gather right long. on that pipe so you have more glass or no? Nah. Okay. I think that's the right amount of glass. It's just, it's a little too thin on this curve, but see how we got the little rattlesnake business there. But that's way too thin to be shipped. So you could have done a flip out of the furnace to, instead of pulling it using gravity. Do another one. Yeah. And then the head's got to be figured out too. I think with this one knocking off the head, I kind of like the shape of the head, the size of the head. And then we just torch that nice and smooth. It's pretty snaky, but also I think that curves too wide. So we want the little one and maybe one more little guy. This one, the smaller. Cool. Gather up. Everyone got a view. Into the tray will be recycled. Next step. All right, that's our recycled furnace, which means the glass that we, uh, some of the scrap we toss back in there, you can use it again. You recycle in your community for the exact same reason. Glass can be remelted over and over and over again. Commercial glass is different than the type of glass we use here. So you cannot bring us broken bottles or 
sheet glass and ask us to recycle them, it doesn't work. But the scrap that we made, all of that can be recycled and we do. Glass is mostly made from sand. It's a pretty cheap material. Um, the expense in glass making the way we do it is the gas from the furnace and the skilled labor. The raw materials are pretty inexpensive. So depending how he holds the pipe determines the thickness and how the glass moves. So it was nice to be able to hold it opposite. The mass is the bright orange and that's what he's gonna pull on. I have straight shears if you want to chop the end off or not. So we do need still a smaller mold. Well, yeah, still, well, you know, I think this should be the one I wrap around on this side for that front curve and the back one can be a wider curve. But if that was tighter, then I could just push the tail. The tail can be freehand as long okay. as we just go around one. All right, there you go, there's your next one. So that one looks pretty good. It's getting closer for sure. I noticed the head could be a little bigger, but I like that thickness. It's like it's got some kind of some goo in there. But I, you were on the right track. Yeah. I also think it's important to notice the, that maybe doing it on a small hole would definitely be better because you've got more. So the glory hole has a diameter, right? And there's a burner that comes in the side, and here's the hole size. If we're doing something small, you can conserve your energy and go in a smaller hole. We just have this glory hole on because of the work we're doing later today. This will break eventually, so I want to move it so it doesn't break in our eyes. We don't want that. That would be no fun. Give it that point. make the head a little bigger on this one. It's quick. I'm trying to use that core heat. You see what happened when Michelle let that one cool down a little too much. She had to bring it back up in temperature and then only the tip was getting hot. So these are, even though they're going to look fast and they are fast, it's technically the timing is so important to make them fast. Well, this is just body shape too. Now there's going to be color. Right, that's true too. Squeeze in your head right now off the pipe. Can't really let go of it. That's the size. I like that size a lot. Rattle tail. And maybe you tuck it in. Right, right, there Boom. you go. That's it, right there. Nice. So I think if you would have squeezed the head one time before you put it on the thing. I just couldn't. Yes, Can't you could. really let go when it's so hot. You couldn't. I don't think so. A day from now when you've done 20 of them, you will. So there we go. It does look good with the rattle tail. It's kind of cool. Tattle tail? Tattle tail. And it's not so long and crazy now. It's thick enough it can be shipped. And now I can take the heat here and not have it just immediately I wonder heat up if you can, if we did the torch right here, you could bend the head up. Does sure. that make sense? Yeah. I would also probably torch this so if there's no sharp edges. Right, and you could also make that half the size if you wanted or not. Yeah. So much easier. The ones that motivated me to do this concept were made out of clay. So much easier. That's weird. Honestly, I don't know how this will work because each time is going to be different depending on the gather and the heat and how you right. grab it. So I think that might be just something we want to probably knock off. Well, I don't know that little gardener snakes, which is kind of what I was they thinking. They don't even have rattles. Right. So I would snip that off. All right. First. And then try the torch on the head. I'm gonna try head. this move right here. Yeah, 
Yeah, there you go. So cut the tail and let's save this one. Then do you want to torch the head after you yeah. knock it off? Yeah, I think we'll knock it and then just torch the heck out of the head. Smooth them right out. Might be nice if they didn't have like a face, maybe. I, I agree. I think they should be stylized. I think the color on the snake is pretty cool. All right. So I'll put a little water right where we want it to break. Hopefully that line is in there good enough that there's not going to be a huge crack mark when we pop it off. Perfect. And you can take the back of the spoon or something, yeah. Water knife, and then this is where we can decide what the head looks like because Chris was saying it should be a little ovalized. I agree, it should have a little bit of ovalization. Um, well, then next time let's take the flat crimps and do that. That's right, we just torch it and then flat crimp it. That's a good idea. That's almost there. That's pretty sweet. I'm gonna grab them right by the head. That's how you grab snakes. Cozy. I think it was pretty darn good. Okay, sweet. so we've got two pairs of flat crimps. They're flat on the inside, so the next one will test. Yeah. Depending how big your size is. Yeah. You wanna do another one? Sure. So we'll do another S bend, then we'll uh, once we get the S bend dialed yep. in then we can think about the coiler. more glass a lot of the technique in glass blowing is about uh, spe well production glass blowing is about uh, matching your gather size if I start off with a third more glass than the last one then the whole process is going to be altered based on how much glass I have so if I'm trying to make replicas or make them at least similar it doesn't make any sense if I can't gather the same amount each time and so I think production is a term that we use in a glass shop or a small craft studio, a specialty studio. A good way to think about it since we're in the Motor City. Where'd those flat crimps go? Do you want them now? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm gonna use them here. So we're in the Motor City, they make cars here. Think of a production line. Every car looks exactly the same. It has its specs, it comes off the line. Maybe the colors are different or the features. But production here, we call it production, but it's still, as you can see, very handcrafted. So maybe it's the small ones there, and then the big ones over here. Right. Because as you stretch and pull that out, it will stay oval. This is where I was talking about, with such a large hole and such a small piece, so much heat is climbing up into the pipe. If we're working on the small hole, then I can really only eat half of the piece instead of having the whole thing get warm. And you're gonna okay. push it. Yep. Then we do this move. Yep. And I think use the straight shears this time and just cut it straight. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty close. We're on to something. I'd love to tape your emotions in the beginning of this and at the end of this. 
When you're like, I can't figure it out. I know. Until the end, when you're like, oh my god, I figured it out. <laughs> Glass blowing is not. That I like that uh, better. Not not emotional. The less you touch, the better off you are. So that's pretty good. Now I think I'll torch the head a little bit and give the head a squish. And are you uh, making the head go upright or no? Oh, we could do that too. So I I'll don't give know. It a torch. Or it could hang off the brick and then you flatten it there. It doesn't have to be up. I like the upright. Maybe just less than what I did on the last one. I think I overdid it a little. Here we go for a little bend on the head. He's looking up. Yeah. Now I'm going to give it the flatten. And then we're going to knock it off. Are you going to flatten it over here? Nope. Right here. Oh, oh baby. A little bit of water right on his lips. Yeah, that's a nice head shape. Then we just round out the edge. And yeah, and we can do a little research on what the, the mouth should look like. I like it stylized. I think that looks really good. Just leave it like that, torched yep. in. Yep, the tail looks great. Because I think the color patterns are going to be. Everything. You catch this guy, he's a slimy little guy. Yeah, I think the Ow, color patterns will be everything. My jowls! My jowls! Anybody ever had Majadra? That's a pretty sweet uh, Middle Eastern lentil dish that we're quite accustomed to here in Dearborn, Michigan. What made you say that? Uh, you said Majals. Oh. I thought Majadra. So I think this mold might be best. That feels too big. Yeah, I agree. This one's got a ridge on it. So. Oh, so we're thinking for the coils, you mean? Yeah. All right, give it a shot. Taking it to Coil Town. Oh my God, so good. So good. We had Middle Eastern the. Um, my mic is still on, but I'll tell all of them. We had the garlic sauce the other day. That is so good. And it's all good when everyone eats it. It's a beautiful thing prototyping like this because all the thoughts of how to sell them and what colors you want to do are coming to your brain all at once. And I think it's a really cool set idea to have, like, if we have a green snake or we have whatever the snake color is that we've designed for the month or on the website, whatever it is, you've got your option of either the S bend or the curl bend you know you get the green with gold spots and I want to have it S bend or you have the curl bend I could just picture it beautifully on the website oh, I did have someone say something about don't talk about selling them just like show us the technique but the reality <laughs> is this is how we make our living so if I don't make a product that's saleable, um, I don't know how I tell DTE or my landlord that I can't pay the rent. Yeah, we're making these products to sell them, folks. It's the truth. Yeah. Yep. There's we're not a, selling anything right now. Yeah, there's a great conversation going around the community about having artists talk and not paying them. Can you come and do a lecture? Can you talk to my senior group? Can you talk to my Girl Scout troop? But I don't have any money to pay you. How does that work? I don't know how that works. Do you ask your dentist, hey, can you clean my teeth without paying? I don't need to pay you, do I? You're a <laughs> dentist, you have money. All right, coil up. Aha, so the other thing is. Horrible. All right, 
We've made a circle. So, so maybe the mold's not necessary for the coil because the coil needs to be tiny. Right. That coil looks good. I'm gonna go try something. And she's gonna try one, but that was a freehand coil. And I was just like, bloop. And it was easy. That was not easy. Plant reef things. Wrap it around that. Yeah. True. Put one in that thing. Hold a little plant pot. I mean, the circle is pretty cool. It's pretty symmetrical. Yeah. Well, let's see what Michelle does with it. We put the diamonds at the bench, please. Thank you. Hmm. 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 You know, I mean, the other thing is too, like we can always just put a circle on the marble, or you've got a snake next to you that you're thinking about and you know what the size of the ring you're trying to do. And as long as you gather the right amount, it can be done. Remember that the recycle always looks hotter than the clear does. True. It's glowing. So she's got her set up. She's going to go for the, the pull around here. What are your thoughts on this, Michelle? My thoughts are hotter, faster spin than snip the tail. So we'll see. All right. So have you ever seen Dale Chihuly work with Lino when they made those big curls on the vases? Nope. So that, that's what's in my head. <laughs> what comes out of my hands could be a whole different thing. Probably uh, shouldn't have put the neck in like this again, but we'll find out in a second. Uh, here. That. Plan Restart. B. It's a beautiful little, uh, it looks like something from the garden, I feel like I can remember. Like a, like a, I don't know. Like a what? A candle flame. A candle flame, sure. Yeah, it does. Especially with the glow to it. We're just gonna give this the old classic sizzle here. That recycle, once we use the recycle one time, we don't wanna reuse it another time because it just gets darker and darker and more overused. It's like reusing clay over and over. It kinda gets a little weird. So I always like to uh, use the recycle one time and then that second used glass is all right, so this time Waste. I'll have it a little bit hotter. I'm not going to put that first neck in there. You see she's cooling down that uh, whole front half of the piece so that when she grabs it, it doesn't pull out as thin as it was there. It's all about timing. Two seconds make a difference. If she wants to finagle it on the bench a little bit longer for an extra, like, 30 seconds, it's going to be 30 seconds colder, and that's a big difference. And your heat gets onto the piece completely different, and it pulls out different. So she's figuring out which way to pull it out. So now. I was thinking, go. well, you got to hold the mold. Right? It's got to be a, <laughs> a mold that, that stationary mold. <laughs> and then this could be cut, but see how. Like it's got to be a, a fast, right? So it would just be a pipe, a pipe attached to the marver. Right. Can I try another one? Yeah. 
We're gonna get this guy off of here. A lot of times, like she said, can I get the diamonds back on the bench, please? I had left the diamonds here. That's a classic move. My dad does it all the time or takes the tweezers to the knockoff station. And then you go for your perfect move when it's time to go and you're like, where is the tool? So you gotta, as the assistant in any any project, you're looking for that. And the jacks are over here, the diamonds over here. You gotta put them back on the bench. That's the team effort of glass blowing. Big time, folks. So I'm gonna try another one after her too, and I, I think I know how to do it. I just I don't think it's gonna take a mold, but we'll see. So the glass addicts page, I believe, posted the bangles being made. Do you want that? Yes. Again? So can you figure out a way? I could try, but you're wrapping your hand around it, so it's kind of You're like, right. So that's no why it to needs it. to be a pipe. All right, so give me a heavier mold. Can we flip one, one of the brass molds upside down, maybe? That guy's pretty heavy. You always, when you grab a mold, you test it like I tested it there, because the molds get hot real fast. And they hold their heat for quite a while, depending on what metal they are. All right, here we go. She's moving a little quicker still, got more core heat. The ball on the end is cold, so she'll grab it and it won't cut off that ball. Let's see how the wrap goes down. It all began oh, back yeah. on 8 Mile in Detroit. <laughs> So, so what then, that would get cut off, and this would be the head if it was a little cooler, but I'm stuck because this mold <laughs> has a rim. Yep. But then you could have the tail come up. Yep. She's stuck on the mold, folks. And that's our show today. I would just cut that one off. There it is. Nice little ring. But if it's a pipe? Yeah. Then you just slide it off. I got to give it one more shot here. gather I'm going to we do like the way the head looks on there so I'm going to give it a little crease I'm gonna go for that head again it's kind of a cool way of doing it Heat. It kind of looks like some kind of like cocoon at that point, like a butterfly cocoon, caterpillar cocoon. Both. All right. So you're just doing a natural coil, not around anything. Yeah. Lost the head, the proportions were not correct. But, I mean, I wonder, I don't think, like, I mean, that's the same size. And it looks like I bent it the opposite way, but they're like almost mirror images other than the thickness of the head. So, we'll keep toying with it. Yep. And so for today, we have concluded our experimental show. We are making snack snacks for our Super Bowl party. I don't know what snacks those are, but some sort of tasty snacks. I hope you guys are all. We got some snacks? For the Super Bowl party. Uh, we basically nature. watch the commercials. 
you know. I hear there's a lot of good musical acts this year. A lot about cryptocurrency. Oh, seriously? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yes. All right. Well, stay tuned. It's been a pleasure seeing you all Sunday morning. We appreciate each and every one of you. Check out the Glass Academy Addicts Facebook page. Check out glassacademy.com, and uh, we'll see you Tuesday at the Gathering Point. All right, all right. Thank you.